Okay, welcome back guys. Um, a little bit of a break we've had since we filmed. I don't remember the last time. It's been at least a week, I would say. Ben is just finishing up his finals. We are really busy with stuff here, projects going on here. Um, not to make excuses, but we we actually have some puppies on the ground. We've got a litter of puppies that was born yesterday and another one that's due today, Ellie and Spry. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, it's taken away from our ability or our focus on filming this series um, and hasn't necessarily taken away from, it has taken away from me working with her a little bit. I just haven't had a whole lot of time um, but that's not to say that we haven't been working on stuff. And that's a point that I like to make is my schedule when I train a dog for someone, this is a client's dog obviously, when I train a dog for someone, I don't, I'm not gonna do it any different than I do my own, which is probably very similar to how you're training your dog at home too. So it's probably a reason, there's lots of different reasons why people connect with different, different pieces of content and different sources of content. And I think they're all, there's a lot of good ones out there. Um, I'm in the market myself for some good content. I'm researching stuff um, real heavily re more recently on some of the setter stuff, some of the pointer stuff. If you follow along with us, you know, I've got a, a setter on, on hopefully yet um, this year, but not for sure. Um, and so I'm going to be researching information that's new to me training wise. And so I'm in the same boat where I'm like, I'm out looking for information. I'm having a hard time, having a hard time finding what, what resonates with me and what um, I'm gonna, I'm getting, a, what I feel like I'm getting a lot of value out of. So I appreciate your support. Um, if you're a se regular watching these series or any of our series, I really am, am grateful and I'm thankful that you do it. Um, but it is different. It's different than a lot of the stuff that's out there. And, and I guess I'm realizing it maybe more so in, in trying to seek other stuff out. But that being said, this is not a series, nor are any of my series or our series going to be like a trainer, like, like sending your dog to a trainer. Um, I think Callie, I'm a trainer and Callie's owner sent her to me, but it's not like she's here for a window of time. And it's not like it's, she is here for a window of time. It's just not the, the training that she's getting isn't based on any time. Um, so for me, I have the luxury and I'm really grateful for the uh, ability to say, we get done what we can get done when we can get it done and we, we progress accordingly. And I really think that the majority of the people that are watching this probably can relate to that. And so that's where, um, you know, if you're an aspiring professional dog trainer that wants to have a training business and, and build your business off of training other people's dogs, I don't know that this, this page is necessarily I hope it's valuable to you, but I don't know that it's going to give you a blueprint um, because it's very different in how that gets done. So with her, we've taken several days off of formal training and, and non-videoing and nothing different has um, no lower expectations of behavior, no difference in how she's lived. She lives in the house with us. She's been sleeping in a crate in the kennel. We've had these pup, we've had these puppies, <clears throat> whelping boxes being built where her kennel used to be. Um, they're in our house. That's how, again, we're not, a, we're not a, a big production kennel. So like we whelp our litters in our laundry room, which is where she used to have her kennel. Um, so we just moved her kennel to the edge of the living room in the laundry room and we, we require her behavior to be so on point and so in control and so level and so non-excitable at times because now we've got puppies in the house. And you've, you watch any of our stuff, if you've watched this series, you've seen some of it. You know, we've got little kids that live in our house. We've got a, a little daughter. Um, we've got an older daughter. We've got an older son. We've got a whole family living in that house. And so she has to fit into it every day all day and that to me is an important part of the training it's not just what happens in this field it's what happens all the way around it um, so she's got a little bit of extra energy and I just said to Ben when we came out here I go you know she's really testing me I put her on a remote sit and went inside the house dropped some stuff off and then came back out and she didn't stay on the remote sit and I was a little peeved by that and I told Ben I said boy she's really just testing me and I gave her a firm sit down and told her to sit down now I came over here and I just went and talked to my neighbor and I put her on a remote sit and Ben had to run to the shop and get an SD card and she did a beautiful job sitting here nicely within sight of me. Um, when I left the area is when she got a little antsy and wandered on me. So what do I do? I make a mental note and I go, we need to work on a remote sit 
And so what I'm going to do is replicate what we did earlier, put her on a remote sit, go into the house, and I'm going to look at her through the window. And she's not going to know I'm looking at her through the window, and then all of a sudden she's going to get up and get antsy, and I'm going to be right there on top of her. Ah, sit down, and I can say it right through the window. And she can go, my God, he's watching me all the time. Those are things that I think are just as equally important in training as the stuff that happens in the field and the stuff that happens in um, the water and stuff that happens in the, the hunting aspects of it. The hunting parts are important, but we just have to have it be well-rounded. So we're going to get her up. I wanted today to start out where I know we got rained out a couple episodes ago. Um, it was a session that this focus will be on, on more mechanical um, things shorter, tighter distances. We might stretch some of those out actually a little bit, but handling is something that we've been trying to sharpen up on with her. Having her take better handles, she's started to really catch on to that well. Uh, alleviating the issue of her coming in. She was had a bad habit of coming in when I'd give her on a right or a left. Um, today we're gonna send her across this field. We're gonna send her, I think, down the middle of the field. We're gonna use the edge of the field to be a guideline, to be a ruler, to be a straight edge, to help her run a straight line. And then we're gonna move away from that straight edge and ask her to replicate it in an area that's a little bit more open and a little more free. And what we're gonna do is get a better understanding of her ability and her willingness to run nice lines. I'm gonna set up a few blinds or unseens, which are gonna be um, built off of memories that she sees. So we'll have memories in this, we'll have unseens in this, we'll have some lining in this, um, using help, using not help. We're going to go through a barrier. I, I'm going to replicate, um, I'm going to stop or do a whistle uh, shy of the fence. That fence is a rope fence. She ducks and goes underneath it pretty good. That's a barrier. Um, we're going to work on sending her back through it when there's dummies on the right and left. So we'll get into it. I, I probably am not going to talk. I'll talk, I always do, but I'm going to do a, a make a point of not necessarily talking quite as much now that we've gotten past this. One last thing, if you would do us a favor, if you'd subscribe um, to the channel, if you're enjoying it, it's giving it allows us to be able to help more people. So if you would hit the subscribe button, if you turn the no notifications on, you won't miss anything that way as well. So let's get started with her. I'm going to bring her over to that spot where we started last time when we got rained out. The one thing I like about this grass is getting a little taller. I liked it actually a couple weeks ago before it got got this long. Watch. 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 Yeah. We're going to start out without even any rights or lefts. We're just going to start out with establishing that back through the fence. It's going to be the first thing we do today. It's going to be the first thing she puts into her mind, and it'll be there for the rest of this session. Good. I don't want her jumping. I don't want her, exp I don't want her moving on anticipation. Good. Come on. Good girl. Come on. All the way. Come on. Good girl. Because she was sticky coming in, I'm going to call her all the way. If she had come running hard to me right off the bat, I'd have stopped her, sent her back. But because she was so sticky to come, and she was sticky to come because I had just got done testing her on it. And she went, I'm not sure. I want to make sure I'm supposed to come. I don't have any problem with that. But I'm going to dictate what I do based on how she responds and reacts. Heel. Good. Callie, go back. 
right through the barrier. Look at where she hits that cover and slows up. She got to push through that. Good. So she went through the barrier just fine, but as soon as she got into the taller grass, and when we walk back over there and reset this, you're going to see that. Good, here. You're going to see where that taller grass was. Hold. Good. Dead. Good. And you'll see where she hung up. Heel. Now, because I know she knows this path, we've already set it up as a memory. We just talked about one of her weaknesses or one of the things that I'm seeing a little bit of a struggle with is her remote sit. So I'll build it in. If she was struggling with heel work, I'd have her on heel right now. But we don't have a big problem with heel work. This time I'm actually gonna throw a, I'm gonna throw a colored dummy, it's feathered. But you can see there's that mode strip with the dandelions and then it's a little bit taller where it hadn't been mowed. That's where she hung up, so she hit that wall. So now I pitch a dummy back out there pretty close to where it was. Again, it's not white. She's not gonna see it. You could see when she was hunting and finally pushed back enough, she did see the dummy. And she kind of cat, kind of pounced on it. That's because she could see it. This time she's not gonna see it. She could smell it. The wind is coming. Which way is the wind coming? It was coming pretty strong before. It's not real strong right now. Coming this way. Yep. Yeah. So we're gonna repeat that same retrieve that we just did. but I may build in a back to it. I may stop her to the whistle here. And if I stop her to the whistle, if, I, if she goes real hard for me, a nice hard line, I'm gonna decide if I want to let her finish that out and push through based on how she's doing with it, her tempo, or I may stop her right at the fence. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because the next thing or part of the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put some white dummies along the edge of the fence and we're gonna have her make a choice. She's either gonna to go to the right, go to the left, or go back. So I'm gonna set her up without a, there's really no reason for her to fail here, going right or left, making a bad decision because there's no dummies there. But we're prepping her for that time by stopping her now. Stop at that spot and then go back. Stop at that spot, maybe go right and left next time, depending on what we decide to do. So there's a lot, there's no like set cadence I have in my head as far as sequencing with this. A lot of it is gonna be built off of or dictated by her body language and how she responds to stuff. She responds to stuff kind of loosey goosey halfway. Well, then we're gonna balance it out to make it, to make sure that she sees it through. If she's kinda gonna stop, then we're not gonna stop her. We're gonna let her come. If she's gonna go hard, we'll stop her because she's got it in her head, she's going hard. So I wanna keep her honest. Callie, go back. There she hit the cover good. Good girl! Good dog! You didn't see the breakdown that time. As she hit the taller grass, she didn't break down good. Good girl, right here. And I was kind of on the fence. Now this isn't the best hold here coming back in. Hold. So we're gonna fix that. Here, right here, good. Good, that's what we want. Good girl. Take the opportunity to always fix it if it's not looking the way you want it. Dead. Good. Good girl. Good. Yeah. Now I was on the fence at sending her through. She kind of slowed up. I think she slowed up because of the barrier. She knew she was coming up on that fence and her, she, she kind of took the f foot off the gas. If that fence wasn't there, I think she'd have ran a lot harder. So I wasn't gonna stop her. I decided at that moment, no, let her push through. Don't stop her as she's slowing up. Now, this time, we're gonna go right back out there with that same dummy, feathered dummy. Go back. Keep 
keep her honest. Good. We never send her on a short retrieve like that. We never throw a dummy and send her. Right here. Right here. So what does she expect? She doesn't expect to get sent, so what do we do? We send her. Good. 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 Good dog. Good. Good. Heel. Good. Look at the spring in her step a little bit too. Not so not so flat that time. Now, these are a little harder to see because of the tall grass. It'd be nicer if it was shorter grass. That one you're gonna see a little bit better. I purposely didn't put it in this short grass. It'd be a little more hidden. So it's up and over, and she's actually on a little bit of a crown in this field. There's kind of a high spot here. It looks downhill and it looks downhill. So she should see those dummies. That one will be a little bit tougher. Yeah. Now this time she's got a choice. There's, there's options. So whichever one we tell her to go to, she's got to, we need to make sure that she goes to it. I'm not as deep, I'm not as far this time. And I'm gonna send her straight through to that orange dummy. You see her head's on a swivel a little bit. Last two dummies were not the one we're gonna send her to. Callie, go back. Good girl. Plows into that cover. Good dog. Good girl. Come on. These are nice, these are big bumpers too. So a little bit challenging for her. Yeah, hold, hold. Hold, good, good. Good, right. good. right here, come on, good. Basically doing the exact same thing that we just did before, except this time we've got dummies on the right and left. Preset. The one thing I think you'll recognize or see is, now she's gone for, I think that's a third retrieve. This would be the fourth one straight through the fence. Each one got better and better as she hits that hits that cut of grass. She really drove into it nicely there, which is what we want. Now, I, do, I expect her to do the exact same thing she's done the last four retrieves. She's gonna go right to that fence, she'll push through, she'll push into the cover real nice. I expect that, because she showed me that she's gonna do that. So this time, I'm gonna be prepared for it and I'm gonna change it because I think she thinks that's what we're gonna do. It's the last dummy we threw. We've done it four times in a row. Now we, now we catch her, keep her honest. So we'll stop her and whichever direction, she, I'm just telling you like how I'm gonna anticipate this ahead of time. Whichever way she stops, she has a tendency to swing around and not necessarily square back up to me. She, she'll tend to be facing or quartering that direction. I'll send her to the left. If by chance she swung this way, I'd send her to the right. But again, countering what she's looking to do. But I have a, I have a, my guess would be she's going to stop and either be 90 degree to me, broadside, or slightly to me, probably slightly to me, and I'll send her to the left. That's what I've been thinking will happen. If she does something different, I'll respond accordingly. Callie, go back. Get out. Good girl. Good dog. Good girl. Come on. There. Very nice. Very good. Much better hold. No feathers on this one. Good. Good. Is that the reason? I don't know, but she's got a nice hold on it this time. Very good. Very good. Not in a hurry to take it away from her. 
good. Just like when she was, if she were a puppy, um, she came to me already with a really good delivery. But if she was one that we had started from the beginning, we're not in a hurry to snag it away. I like to have her hold on to that. Good, good job. Yeah, yeah. Change it a little, add a little bit of distance to it. This time, we'll see which way she turns. She had a nice little, nice responsive stop to the whistle. Heel. See how she wants? She's automatically gonna go that way. So what am I gonna do? The opposite. Good. Callie, go back. Go back. Good girl. Good dog. Good dog. For whatever reason, she never wants to come back through there. She always wants to go around that stake. Good, good. And I don't care. Hold, good dog. Very nice, nice hold on it too. Good dog. Good girl, did, did, good girl, good. Now, I'm gonna leave that dummy because I wanna let it get some age to it and we're gonna come back to it later. Knowing that it's there, knowing that it's white, knowing that it's along a fence line. Let's go to here and we're gonna change the direction of what we're doing. Now, those lefts and rights, we only sent one, one left, I guess. We're not real long, pretty short, actually. So what I'm gonna do to balance that out a little bit today is go with a nice long one. Again, leaving the dog on a remote sit. Just because that's something that she showed me, we gotta work on. Haven't been doing it a lot. Haven't been in a lot of scenarios or situations where I've asked her to sit long amounts of time remote and just focus. Probably should. I've had opportunities, haven't done it. And she's not that good at it, so we need to do it more often. This one, gonna do a little different. We normally would do what we did down there, pitch it right into the corner. <clears throat> Instead, I'm gonna throw it up and over the fence onto the other side. So just because it's not in the field, we're gonna get another chance for her to push through a barrier and have to, just to make that extra little bit of distance. Now, if we look back on our video series, you remember part of why we went to this focus of handling stuff is because she had the bad habit of every time I went right or left, she was coming in. And so we're gonna see, we've done quite a bit since then. She's improved on that quite a bit. We're gonna see that this is a real good, if that's still there, we're gonna see it here. We're also going to read her body language. So I'm going to go to my right, her left, and we're going to see when I do it where her head goes. If she cheats for her cheats, when I say cheat, it's in a good way. Peaks for me. If she sees my right hand go up and peaks to the peaks to that direction, check mark. That's a real good thing. She's anticipating, not necessarily going, but anticipating, looking out that direction. She has a tendency to want to look at that last dummy. So we're definitely going to go to the opposite. She's also downwind of that one. Look how she cheats back to it every time. See what she does when I put my hand up to the opposite. OK, 
Get out. Good. Good. No real definite cheat there as far as a tell. She didn't lean, she didn't turn the head. Ellie always ducks down and leans in in anticipation and I know she's gonna make the right decision when she does that. Really no tell from her. I thought she, was, she shot me pretty square. Good, good girl. But when we did go to that direction, she didn't give me a bad come in and bow out. It was maybe a step and then go. It was real definitive. I did not, I don't have an issue with how that one went. Good. Especially because we're not tight up against that wall, against that fence. We don't have her back up against it. Now, I'm gonna leave that dummy. So I'm gonna come down here. We're gonna leave that dummy. We're just gonna set up, so there's this clump of grass I noticed. Real tall, you're not gonna see the dummy in this grass. Now it's a memory, so she'll see it go in there. She's not gonna see it once it's in there from any distance. Yeah. Sit down. We're also in the middle of the field. No help from that fence anymore. This is all, all this is gonna require 100% of her carrying a nice line for me, keeping it. Nothing wrong with just, build, this is just building in delay. So the one thing I was thinking about doing was coming down here, dropping a dummy unseen or a tennis ball unseen out of my pocket and leaving it here. And then having her come to me, we're gonna send her back to that one. This is, I wanna get a, a good recall and then a back. Um, if she doesn't recall well to me, like if she gets sticky and hangs up on the way coming back to me, I won't stop her. I'll bring her all the way in. And then I'll turn around and line her and stop her on the way out. If she comes really hard to me, which I'm hoping she will, so what I'm gonna tell her to do is come to me. If she comes running hard to me, I'll stop her on a whistle and send her back. Now, I was gonna pitch the dummy in here and leave it as an unseen and send it almost as a, as a blind to it. Um, I don't wanna do that, and the reason I don't wanna do that is because as I was coming over that hill, and you can see, there's a hill in between me and her. It's not a lot, but it's enough that when you're up there, it's a foot up and you got a better view. What I didn't want to do is send her coming over that hill on a blind retrieve with her head up because she probably would see that dummy and there, that dummy would suck, suck her into it. And I'd have a hard time at her level right now telling her, leave a dummy that you see when I send you in a blind with a direction of 15 degrees difference. I'm not going to ask that of her. So instead, of leaving a blind here, I'm gonna set it up so that I can leave a blind back in there, which is where she's gonna make this memory pick anyway. So it'll be an unseen in the same spot that she's already familiar picking one up not too long before. So that's, I changed my mind on it. Come on. Good girl. Come on. Come on. Good, good, go back, good girl. The reason I recalled her back to me, she stopped and started to anticipate a back cast. Good girl. And because she wanted to anticipate going back, I said, nope, come back, come to me. And with that second stop, she was square. Instead of cheating to go back, she was square. Okay, now I'm gonna send you back. Good girl. Very good. Good dog. Dead. Dead. Good. Now I just talked about not necessarily 
thinking it's fair for me to send her on a blind when she sees that. Now, I don't, but I do think it's fair to send her on a memory that she sees me put there. In fact, I want her to be able to come over that hill and remember that where she's going and what she's going for. And even if she does see a little white speck in the corner, don't get sucked away from where I think I'm supposed to be going. I'll have to keep that in mind on my end. If I start to see her at about this point, veer to the right, because she sees that little white spot in the corner, I better stop her. And either recall her back and reset her, or come up here and reset her, but I don't want her going there. And I, on the memory, I don't really want to handle her. I don't want to, I don't want to handle her off of a dummy. The idea is to run to the memory. But by doing it this way, setting that up as a, as a, a memory, we're getting an extra repetition with the distance of the walking that we're going to be doing. And I can come down here and I can throw that unseen in here after I send her. So when I send her back to that memory, that's when I'll pitch a dummy into this cover. She'll never know. Wind is going that way. But the next time we send her on that blind, it's going to be to a familiar spot. So now as I look back, I don't see any of the dummies because they're down over the hill in the combination of the grass. So now we're in the middle of this field, no edge to help us, no straight edge rulers. Callie, go back. Nice straight line, good girl. Get this in here before she sees it. Good girl. Good dog. Very good. Very good. Good girl. Good. Bring her over here. If you remember, we got the one way in the opposite corner. This is a way for her to stretch out on a long handle to the left. Back to the edge of this field. Gonna help her with it using the fence. Instead of us doing it in the middle and having equal distances on both sides, we're 90% to the right and or to the right and there's 10% left, 90% she's got to run back of the length there. This is a longer handle to the left than she's ever done before. Will she remember that one in the corner? Maybe, maybe not. The wind is coming that way, so she might catch a little bit of wind from it. The, the straight edge is going to help us. Good. Get out. Good, good, good girl. See how the straight edge helped us. Good girl. Good girl, that was a good dog. The straight edge is what made that work for us. Good girl, good, right here, come on, come on. That's it, good dog. So. Is that a real practical handle to the left? Probably not. We usually aren't going to send her that far to the left. And, it's, and you know, we're pretty close to her. So in reality, if we were in the field, I, it wouldn't be the most logical thing to send her 15 yards in front of me to send her 120 yards on a left-hand cast. But the idea is the emphasis in the, the command in this setting is what's going to get drilled into her. So that when we do send her on a 30 to 40 yard one, from that distance, it's cakewalk, it's easy. Now, if you remember, we got one by that birdhouse. So we're just gonna walk up to being parallel to it and clean these last two dummies up. And I don't know, she probably made a dozen retrieves, which is a lot for her usually in a session like this, but they've all had purpose. They've all had some meaning. Good. 
Heel work has been real nice throughout. Remote steadiness has been, sit has been real nice throughout. A lot of value in a lot of things today. Not a lot of new concepts learned. A lot of sharpening and polishing concepts. Heel, so right away she's fading. Heel, good. Heel. Callie, go back. Here, here. She went right back to that spot where she's been making retrieves. 30 yards out here, here. We can't have her going off of memory to a spot. We gotta have her running true lines. So we're gonna cut the distance. And the light bulb is gonna turn on for her and go, I don't have to, I shouldn't run to spots I've always been. Callie, go back. Good girl. Good dog. Now, now I'll back up and get the full distance. Good dog. Good girl. That's it. No, you come in under control. See how sloppy that was at the end? Getting a little bit tired. Come on, right here. Come on. And a little sloppy. Good. Good. Dead. Good heel. Kelly, go back. Beautiful. Good girl. Good girl. And I'm going to take that and be real happy with uh, several things that we just talked about what we worked on. Now hold, hold, and a much more controlled. Now I was there to remind her of it. Good, which is what she needed on the last one and I took for granted and she came in a little bit loose, bumps into me, drops the dummy. Good, so that time we adjusted with how we brought her in. Good, dead, dead. And that's good plenty for right now. Good session of, of maybe confidence for both of us. I uh, hope confidence for her, I think it is. For me as well in the idea of all of our little broken down sessions for the last month probably are starting to pay off. They're starting to um, be habit. They're starting to be strong enough that we can start to build into like more challenging setups that are not necessarily lessons like teaching skills, they're practicing skills. And so um, one of the things I got into a little bit of trouble with her when we were over in Buffalo County at the workshop, when we were over in Buffalo County a couple weeks before shed hunting, we were, I don't know if those, have post, if those posted. So those have posted, I got into some more challenging setups with her that were a little bigger um, than I probably was ready for. And so because we struggled on them, we backed up and started either developing the skill a little bit more precise or sharpening the skill a lot more um, to make it more understood, more clear, more capable of using in like an everyday situation. Today was like a halfway, not a very challenging setup. It wasn't like, it was a tough setup. It wasn't like a one and done type setup where it was, we're gonna put a dummy here and a dummy here and a dummy here and we're gonna send you to pick those dummies and see how you do. It was some thought in the idea of, okay, we're gonna place this one and this one and this one to lead me to this one and this one and this one. And we're gonna break down individual skills with backs, rights, lefts, memories, lining, all kind of intertwined into it. So a good session um, with some good takeaways for both of us. So we'll build off of that, good girl. <laughs>